Now, we, everyone has the five needs in this theory, but everyone has a unique, specific quality world that's different from everyone else's. Mm -hmm. And what does addictions have to do with this? Well, uh, as a result of the quality world and our series of wants, we generate behaviors. We generate actions, thinking, feeling, and physiology. And alcohol, drugs, substance abuse, and other uh, behaviors have a very appealing quality to them. They appear to be able to satisfy our needs. So people put them in their quality world as very need satisfying. Mm -hmm. uh, if you drink, for example, you can have an, a sense of belonging, a sense of, of freedom from stress. It's certainly enjoyable. And uh, a lot of people say it gives them power. They can, you know, they can drive their car better after a few drinks. Uh, the other drivers don't, don't scare yeah, them so much. We all agree with that. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, the rest of the world doesn't agree with it. <laughs> and it's only a temporary illusion. Mm -hmm. But uh, people put these substances in their quality world as need satisfying when they can't figure out a better way to satisfy those needs. So our role as helpers, as as educators, as counselors, as therapists, to, is to help them create a world around them that's need satisfying, and, and in many ways be an advocate in organizations that will create that kind of atmosphere to make it make it easier for people to choose more effective behaviors. Can you talk about how that how you do that? How is that operationalized in terms of techniques no. that uh, reality therapists? Glad you asked that question. <laughs> Are there some things that we should especially watch for as we're? Um, yeah. Looking at this. Kind of set it up for yeah, the audience, yeah, for yeah. the viewers. Okay, well, this is a man who uh, came f for counseling who, uh, as Judy so, so nicely said, is in some, in some ways here and in some ways there on, on the recovery uh, track. And uh, he's, he lives at home with his brother, whom he doesn't see very much. And mm -hmm. so I, I take him to be a, a very lonely person. And I was hoping that uh, I could work on helping him make a, a form a relationship if that's what he wanted. I think he wants it. I think he, he doesn't exactly know how to do that. But uh, I also kind of focused on uh, his depression, his depressing behaviors that he's generated. And uh, he wants to get rid of the depression. A theme that runs throughout this is that he tends to see his control as outside of him. Mm -hmm. And I'm working in a whole different mindset than that. And I'm working on the idea that the control and the choices originate inside of us. Then, yeah. And he's saying, well, the medicine and, and this, and he's very, he, he has some physical problems. And uh, so he's, he's, he's talking a different language than I am. I mean, I'm trying to empathize and understand, not deal with my agenda so much mm -hmm. as his. And uh, combining these two, I think, is the art of counseling. Oh. Let's watch. <laughs> 